Hello and welcome to NTV. This is Aishi Fadasi. And guess what? Today I am at India's first few hospitals which is dedicated to liver disease that is the South Asian Liver Institute in Hyderabad, Telangana. The mission is simple, to bring the treatment of liver disease in India on par with the rest of the world. Welcome to our uh, console over here where we do CT uh, scan detailed studies for the liver donors. So as you know, the liver is one of the organs where you have such a varied anatomy in each human being. So one person to the other the anatomy varies. And that's one of the reasons why we need to do a detailed uh, CT scan of the blood vessels and the liver anatomy in each person in order to understand what is the best way to operate. Arterial phase in one of our donors over here. So if you see, here is where the, this is called the celiac plexus and that gives rise to the artery that eventually supplies the liver. So we do this because we know at what level we have to cut in this case. So not just this, there is other than the artery, there is also the veins. So the veins look like that. Here is also a standard anatomy. Then we look at the veins that enter the IVC over here. Each is different. So it's every patient who is a donor has a different anatomy. We have to uh, study them in detail before we put a knife to them. Thereby we reduce the complications and we keep a very, very high safety margin so that we never have a complication in our donor. That is our endeavor and we have been so successful with it. In Kemana Ibban Nunte Cheste Tapakunda call chende. Anything, we are always there for you. Bye sir. In case of any emergencies or any complaints for a patient, uh, we provide with online consultation, which is Available 24 by 7. Hi, I am Lakshmi. I am working as pharmacist in the Sally Hospital, South Asian Liver Institute. Hi, I am Sarah, Head of Nutrition at South Asian Liver Institute. My entire passion in our life is to try and reverse the harmful effects of bad nutrition or overnutrition and sometimes undernutrition. We work very hard to try and reverse the liver diseases with excellent diet plans. So today we have uh, one of the smallest uh, child that is Vishal who went through a liver transplant surgery here in South Asian Liver Institute back when when he was just 11 months year old. Can you just imagine that 11 months old baby is now all healthy. So let us go inside and let us talk to Vishal and his parents and let us get to know about their experience as as how their life is before and after the surgery. So let's go inside. Hi, Hi. 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 So to take us through Vishal's journey, we have Vishal's parents here, Mr. Anil and Mrs. Shravanti with us, uh, who will be sharing their experience uh, after and before the surgery. So let's welcome him. So Vishal, before after surgery, Vishal's journey at long time. There problem that I have 11 months ago operation. Mm -hmm. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. School is okay. Yes, okay. Please. Full happy, healthy. Full happy. So as we all heard that it was uh, Vishal's mother who donated liver to him. Isn't it something that one should be proud of? A mother saving his own child here. So uh, we can all see that the 11 months old uh, Vishal who was, you know, a uh, little thin and who was going through a lot of uh, struggles back then. And look at Vishal now. He's all happy. He's all healthy. He's going to school and playing uh, and, you know, living a life just like a normal child. So that's how a liver transplant surgery transforms a life of uh, people. 
So now that we heard Vishal's story as to how, uh, you know, a South Asian Liver Institute totally uh, changed and transformed his life through this surgery. So now we have another patient here at a South Asian Liver Institute, an adult, or we can say that an elderly person who has been through this a liver transplant surgery, Mr. Mubha Venkateshwar Rao. So let us hear it from him about his journey, about his challenges that he went through before and after this surgery. My name is Mubha Venkateshwar Rao. My name is Vijayawada. I have been six years in the liver problem. నేను మంచి డాక్టర్ ఎక్కడా అని చెప్పి నేను గుంటూరులో మా రెల్టివ్ ఒక డాక్టర్ గ్యాస్ట్రో ఎంట్రాలజీ ఒక ఆయన టామ్ సార్ గురించి నాకు తెలియపరచడం జరిగింది అప్పుడు నేను టామ్ సార్ని జులై నెలలో నేను కలవటం జరిగింది కలిసిన తర్వాత నాకు జీవందాంలో నమోదు చేసుకోవడం జరిగింది అది మహారాష్ట్ర తెలంగాణ ఆంధ్రాలో చేశాను నాకు మహారాష్ట్రలో వచ్చింది నవంబర్ ఇరవై ఒకటవ తారీఖు రే మిడ్ నైట్ పన్నెండున్నరకి నాకు ఫోన్ వచ్చింది ఫోన్ వస్తే నేను వెంటనే ఇమీడియట్గా బయలుదేరతాను జరిగింది విజయవాడ నుంచి మా తర్వాత ఇరవై రెండవ తారీఖు మూడు గంటలకి నేను నాగపూర్ వెళ్ళడం జరిగింది ఆ రోజు నైట్ నాకు ఆపరేషన్ జరిగింది లివర్ ప్రాబ్లం ఉన్నప్పుడు చాలా బాధపడ్డాను నాకు అప్పుడప్పుడు ఏంటంటే సాల్ట్ తగిలితే బ్రెయిన్ అది రకంగా ఏం తెలిసేది కాదు ఆపరేషన్ అయిన తర్వాత చాలా బాగున్నాయి అక్కడ నాగపూర్లో ఓ కార్డ్ హాస్పిటల్లో టామ్స్ టామ్ సారు ఆపరేషన్ చేసినాడు ఇప్పుడు నా హెల్త్ హ్యాపీగా ఉంది so now that we heard about uh, the story and the journey of mr mubha venkateshwar rao that how his life has completely transformed after going through a liver transplant surgery at the south asian liver institute but as you know that he was not from hyderabad he was from another state and uh, there were a lot of challenges while coordinating for this liver transplant surgery so to talk more about how uh, they coordinate with the donors and the patients at uh, at south asian liver institute we have ms jyoti with us who is the coordinator here so let us talk to jyoti and let us uh, get to know about what happened that night when mr mopa venkateshwar rao was going through this liver transplant surgery hi jyoti hi yes so let uh, we want to go a little flashback and we want to understand that what happened that night when you were coordinating through a lot of channels for this liver transplant surgery which mr mopa venkateshwar rao went through when i got the information uh, from our partner hospital nagpur uh, that day uh, 11:30 12 o'clock i got the call uh, that is a very difficult to uh, to uh, arrange everything uh, actually patient is vijayawada uh, we need to first we need to check the patient is suitable for this uh, liver after that we need to uh, inform the patient Jewat border to Nagpur around 700 kilometers are there that is not a easy task uh, they are, they want to journey here to there surgery is uh, done very smoothly we have with us uh, master abhishek who is a 16 year old boy uh, so he had something known as wilson's disease now wilson's disease is a genetic disease and it causes increased amount of copper in the body and what that does is accumulates in the tissues and because of accumulation in the tissues it causes growth retardation so he doesn't look like a 16 year old boy he looks like a young boy <laughs> still about 9 10 years of age but also the other thing is that it has damaged his liver so when he came to us his liver was damaged and he needed a transplant so one of the unique things and difficulty technical challenge in abhishek's case was that his father who was a donor he had a different anatomy of the portal vein he had a single portal vein which made it very difficult normally everyone has two portal veins once the portal vein goes in it splits into two branches but his portal vein had only a single branch moving to the left so for us it was a great challenge so once we managed this procedure he had a very beautiful recovery and it was a feat accomplished because the father was discharged without any complications he is back to work and abhishek has been doing very well for the last 3 months so this is a real success story on behalf of our institute parasthitulu anukulanga lenappudu sir maaku chaala dayam ani cheppi tom sir 
ఆపరేషన్ సక్సెస్ అవటానికి చాలా ఉపయోగపడ్డారు ఆపరేషన్ చాలా మంచిగా చేశారు తర్వాత కూడా చిన్న చిన్న ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ వచ్చిన టీమ్స్ కానీ సార్స్ కానీ చాలా మమ్మల్ని ప్రోత్సహించి ప్రతి విషయంలో చాలా హెల్ప్ చేశారు చాలా టూ థౌజండ్ ఫిఫ్టీన్లో సర్జరీ అయింది నాది ఐఎమ్ వెరీ లక్కీ ఒక జీవితాన్ని ఇచ్చాడు చెరియన్ వెరీ ఫెంటాస్టిక్ డాక్టర్ when we heard the journey from jyoti from vishal and from mr venkateshwar it speaks very loudly about south asian liver institute as to how dedicated and committed their team is no matter what uh, time of the day it is hi so the liver foundation india is a project that we started a few friends and i to help patients with liver disease because i feel that patients with liver disease are often disadvantaged first everybody assumes that all patients with liver disease are alcoholics which is not true hardly 30% of the patients that come to south asian have an alcohol history the rest have got viral hepatitis fatty liver disease biliary atresia and therefore the liver foundation india helps to spread awareness about liver disease and the potential treatments for liver disease and in several cases we even try to bring about some financial assistance to patients who need that in the treatment of liver disease laparoscopy uh, with liver as an organ is a relatively a new concept and we are proud to state that in the year 2014 we did our first ever uh, laparoscopic liver resection and uh, the patient is doing very well and to this day he lives a beautiful normal life so we look at minimal access surgery for liver uh, that is with laparoscopy to minimize the scars and be a very short duration of a hospital stay and it can be done with our institute the other side to this is that we are slowly easing our way into the next frontier which is robotics so robotics in liver surgery is something that we are making our way into and we would like to soon see you come up for that so well without any further delay let's welcome professor cherian in this episode and let us get to know about his journey and all about south asian liver institute a warm welcome to ntv professor cherian thank you so honored to have you here in this episode today thanks yes so starting with uh, we would love to know about your journey so please tell us about your journey as to being a mere uh, mere doctor you know to being who you are today i think i'm still a mere doctor and um, the road to transplantation was accidentally thrust upon me what i felt was that i wanted to be a surgeon but birmingham which is the place where i trained they had a very famous liver unit started by professor paul mcmaster so being in birmingham i felt that transplantation is the right way to go and i just followed that path then you know how life is chances come your way when i was in uk then i wanted to come to india and several parts of india at that time when i came back to india did not have liver transplantation so i had the privilege of starting transplantation in various places and that is just god's grace that i happened to be in the right place at the right time but uh, while you were in uh England yeah. you were working with the quite reputed hospitals out there so what was that trigger point in your life that you know you felt that no i have to come back to india and serve the indians here don't forget i am indian yeah, yeah. <laughs> and therefore my passion has always been to come back and do something in our country and i also felt that england and europe has already got established systems in place and therefore there is nothing new to set up there is nothing new to create and the people there are well served by hospitals whether i am there or not whereas if i was setting up a new service here for example after i came back 
we set up centers in Imphal and Gauhati for liver disease that had never been there before. We were instrumental in starting liver transplantation in the new Andhra Pradesh. So these are all things that gives you some satisfaction that you have done or you have made a difference. So I think that's that's the key thing that brought me back. Professor Chetian, you have started Liver Image. So what is it and how does it help? So Liver Image is a web-based educational tool for people wanting to be liver specialists. They could be gastroenterologists wanting to know more about liver disease or liver surgeons wanting to know more about transplantation. So this is a series of pictures and stories with the pictures, sometimes lessons that we have learned while treating a patient. And it is there on a website in different sections. It is uploaded by people who send things to us and from our own series. And we have some of the world's best liver surgeons as editors in that website. And therefore they pick and they choose and they give their own comments. And these are people like the chairman of the Mayo Clinic, the transplant director of Paul Bruce in uh, Paris, uh, the head of King's College London, and people whose opinions normally would not be available to a postgraduate student in Hyderabad. And that's the whole purpose behind liver image. Professor Cherian, as we all know that you have worked in some of the reputed uh, hospitals back there in London. So how was your time back then when you were uh, serving in these hospitals? I went to England initially to train in surgery. So I started off with uh, general surgery first. I spent nearly four years learning general surgery, did my FRCS, which is called the first of us years. Then I got into a Kalman rotation and got my CCST nearly four years after that when I completed my exit FRCS in upper GI surgery. But like I said to you before, the unit where I was doing my surgical training was a very famous transplant unit and therefore automatically I was thrown into the world of liver transplantation and I was hooked for life. It was amazing to see cadaver livers coming to life. It was amazing to see the transformation that transplantation brings to patients. And so I finished my CCSD in liver transplantation in Birmingham in Paul McMaster's unit, Queen Elizabeth Hospital. By that time, I had done about maybe 30 or 40 transplants already. Then after this training, I joined King's College Hospital as a surgeon. And I worked in King's London for nearly five years. And in that five years, I saw some amazing people, uh, the kind of people that who write textbooks and who are the world's experts on things. And therefore, sitting next to them and learning from them every day was, was pure magic. So in King's, we were doing about 220 transplants every year. So during my time there, I would have seen about 2,000 transplants maybe or maybe 1,200, 1,300 transplants, of which I would have performed about uh, 400 of them. By the time I finished in King's, I was looking after their um, DBD donor uh, program, and I was also in charge of the registrar training rotation. And King's had a pediatric unit that was very famous. And so we were going across the country. I even used to go to Cambridge and Leeds to do split liver transplants and bring the liver back to London to be implanted into our children. So long, nearly 17 years in, the, in, in England. Well, after 17 years serving back in England, you have come to India and you have set up the South Asian uh, Liver Institute here. And there are a lot of branches in the other parts of India as well. So what was your vision and mission uh, when you were, uh, you know, launching this or you were setting up uh, these institutes? I think our vision statement says to bring world-class liver treatment to liver patients in India at a cost that is affordable to them. Mm -hmm. So 
liver disease, unlike cardiac disease or heart disease or even lung disease, is very poorly served in our country. So, yet we have a huge disease burden. There are 300,000 liver deaths every year in our country, which is the same number as has died in one year of the Ukraine war. But who's talking about it? There is no headlines about these 300,000 people dead, whereas there is a headline every day of the people dying in Ukraine. So it's a very uh, neglected disease and I wanted to do something for liver patients. So I was part of a care hospitals. I used to be the national director for liver surgery in care, but that's a multi-speciality hospital. And I wanted a hospital that is purely dedicated to patients with liver disease. So we can serve them better. So we have, for example, liver patients with kidney disorders. We have liver patients with lung disorders. So we here have combined clinics so that these patients are looked after by both a liver specialist and a kidney specialist at the same time so that their treatment is optimized. So that is the first real uh, push to start South Asian. The second push was I wanted to start a, what I would call a short stay or a daycare unit for liver disease, which doesn't exist in the country, where simple procedures that can be done in one day can be done and the patient is discharged so that their costs are minimized. So the vast majority, I wouldn't say vast majority, a good percentage of a patient's costs nowadays in India is just staying in hospital. So I thought if we have a short stay unit, or a daycare unit, we can send them home the same day, therefore minimize their staying costs. But we do procedures here that is not done in many larger hospitals. For example, we do post-transplant ERCPs here, we do fibro scans here. So we have state-of-the-art equipment, but all of it being done as a daycare or a short-stay procedure. But uh, there are a lot of institutes here in India. Uh, so how does, you know, South Asian Liver Institute is different from all other than like what makes you ta uh, stand the tallest amongst all of them? So like I said, experience has got a role to play. So I have now done about 700 transplants in my life, nearly 300 transplants in Hyderabad. And the team that has been with me all along have been we have been together and therefore the sheer experience of doing so many transplants it will give you a certain ease of dealing with liver patients. So that's the first thing. Second thing is like I said to you before, King's College London, they have been doing transplants from the beginning of liver transplantation. So the whole point is bringing world-class liver disease treatment locally. So, Professor Cherian, you are uh, very well known and you are very respected in this medical field because you have a great interest, you know, when it comes to the prevention of liver diseases. So, why do you mm -hmm. do this? So, um, very frankly, I think neither we as individuals or India as a country, we just don't have the resources. We cannot afford treatment. And therefore, Prevention is all that we have. For example, if we continue as we are with fatty liver disease increasing, alcoholic liver disease increasing, we need something like 40,000 liver transplants every year. Neither our governments nor we as individuals can afford to have this happen. And which is why I got into prevention in a big way. And I also feel that for Many people, even for myself, if I need to have a transplant, 25 lakhs, 23 lakhs, 20 lakhs is a large amount. It is life-saving, there is no question, but it is expensive. So that's one reason. Second reason is immunosuppression has side effects. So if I can get somebody to come back or never even reach the stage of cirrhosis, I thought that would be great. So we started something called LICAP program that aims to bring patients with liver disease back to liver health, hopefully before it reaches a stage of cirrhosis. And that's the whole point. When we talk about South Asian Liver Institute in particular, so what are the key benefits of 
you know, South Asian liver institute to the liver patients? So I think the, the, the best thing is that we have a very high standard of care. Exactly the kind of liver assessments that we do in London, exactly the number of staff and surgeons and anesthetists that I used to have in King's College London, we still have today here in Hyderabad, or Vijayawada or Nagpur or Mumbai, wherever we are operating. So that's the first thing. So we have converted world-class standards to Hyderabad. Second thing is we are trying to mitigate the costs for the patients by reducing the number of days that the patients have to stay in hospital. Third thing is because of our prevention drives, many patients who are referred to us for a transplant, we have found ways to correct their diseases back. Some simple things would be diagnosing autoimmune hepatitis, starting them on medical treatment, and then their livers have got better. I still remember a lady who was referred to me with ascites, which is a sign of end-stage liver disease. But later on, we found out there was actually TB that was causing it. And just some antibiotics reversed the disease and she did not need a transplant. So there is an uh, uh, attention to detail because we only serve liver patients. So our hospital doesn't deal with heart disease or lung disease or anything else. So therefore, all our staff is keyed towards working with liver patients and looking for liver symptoms and trying to ease that. So I think these are the few advantages that I can think of. The last point would be that we have a na nationwide spread of our service. So people in Maharashtra can have our transplants in Mumbai. People in Vidarbha can have transplants with us in um, Nagpur. Of course, we are based out of Hyderabad and we operate in very highly respected hospitals in Vijayawada. And therefore, we are able to provide this world-class service very close to their homes. And on top of that, we run nearly seven or eight other clinics in various towns. For example, even a small town like Anandapur has got a South Asian Liver Institute clinic. And therefore, let's say a patient from there gets a transplant in Hyderabad, they don't have to come back to Hyderabad every time to see a, a liver surgeon or a liver specialist. We go there and see them. So these are the few things that I would have thought we bring to the arena. Also, Professor Cherian, when we look at your professional life, you have done many firsts. <laughs> so uh, one of them is the first uh, split liver transplantation that you have done in Telugu states. So can you just explain about it and give an <laughs> insight of it? Sure. Uh, like I said to you before, doing the first procedure or a transplant is often God's grace that he has put you in the right place at the right time. And I had the fortunate experience of doing the first liver transplant in Usmania Hospital. I started the liver transplant program in Nizam's Institute of Medical Sciences. Uh, I was the first one to do a living donor transplant in Andhra Pradesh. But I think the split liver transplant that you talk about is very special in my heart. What we have to understand is there is a chronic shortage of organs for patients with liver disease. So there is hundreds of people on the waiting list and many of them are dying because they're not getting an organ in time. So when we get a cadaveric organ, there is a process by which we divide the organ into two, a smaller right lobe, a smaller left lobe and a larger right lobe. And we take the smaller and put it into a child and we take the larger right lobe and put it into an adult. We were lucky enough to, to do the first successful one uh, maybe about seven years ago in Hyderabad and uh, they have done fantastically well. So the beauty of split liver transplantation is, is it literally doubles the number of organs available for liver patients. Now that we, uh, you know, uh, we have known about your professional life, now shifting a little to your personal life, mm -hmm. we would uh, like to know about your parents, your family, where are they from? My father was a cardiac surgeon. He was quite a well-known cardiac surgeon. His name was Jacob Cherian. He was a Padma Bhushan himself, uh, mainly for his work among the community in Tamil Nadu. 
But uh, we all come from Kerala, although we settled down in Tamil Nadu a long, long time ago. I uh, married uh, a classmate of mine. <laughs> Her name is Sri Lekha, and uh, she is a gastroenterologist. We have two boys. The older one is doing biomedical engineering in Oxford, and the little one is in eight standards. His name is Aiden, and the older one is Ryan. Professor Cherian, your reputation in the liver cancer surgery is well known across the whole country. So I want to know here why. You see, uh, liver cancers have a reputation as a death sentence in India. And the truth is, with high quality surgery, we can achieve fantastic outcomes. So HCC, which is a cancer that grows in a background of cirrhosis, can be cured with transplantation. In fact, if you've got a HCC without cirrhosis, like recently I had a patient who had no cirrhosis and we were able to cure him with just a liver resection. Every day we do donor surgery where we remove part of the liver of the donor and implant it into the recipient. So this experience in donor surgery puts us at a very, very high level of skills that is more than that is what is required for a cancer operation. Therefore, many cancers that many people would think is inoperable would be easily operable or at least operable by us. There was an ophthalmologist from Mumbai. He was told in at least five or six other centers in Mumbai, which is a big city that this is an inoperable cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, but we flew him down here and we reassessed his liver and we were able to remove that tumor. And now that was about five years ago. So these are unique stories. And I feel strongly about this because liver cancers are killing about 120,000 people every year in this country. And I believe that at least 20,000 of them, or maybe even 30,000 of them can be rescued, but that's not happening. Many people are feeling like chemotherapy is the best option. The truth is chemotherapy does not cure. It is a palliative procedure that in most cases just slows down the disease, but does not cure. Whereas surgery, if effectively done, can cure and they can go on to live normal lives. Chemotherapy has a role, in reducing the disease burden so that the operation becomes smaller. But in most liver cancers, they cannot cure and can only produce palliative care. And therefore, these surgeries, we have now done about 100 such cancers, HCCs, cholangiocarcinomas, gallbladder cancers, even advanced pancreatic cancers. And we have got a 98% one-year survival. And that's particularly significant when you consider that most of these people would have been dead within one year of their diagnosis without such an operation. So uh, lastly, Professor Cherian, that uh, why should one who is suffering from you know, liver diseases should come to South Asian Liver Institute and also your message to the audience? Well, first of all, I just believe that every liver patient should go to a specialist unit. They don't have to come to South Asian. But what I feel is they're not going anywhere. They're sitting at home based on opinions of people who are not experts, thinking that they got an inoperable disease. So my message to everyone would be, liver disease is rampant. That means many of us are suffering with liver disease. Don't take it lightly because it can kill. Please understand that if you come to us at an early stage, we can reverse much of this disease because the liver has got a fantastic regenerative capacity. And finally, even if it is a cancer or even if it is a delayed stage like cirrhosis, please don't give up. Please don't lose heart because there are fantastic outcomes for liver disease with transplantation and liver surgery. Like I said to you before, we have a approximately 85 to 90 percent survival rate with liver transplantation and a more than 95 to 98 percent survival with our liver cancer operations. Therefore, my view is in most cases, we are able to cure. I wouldn't say most cases, in many cases, we are able to cure 
and in almost all cases we are at least able to prolong life. So don't give up, take care of your liver and I think I wish you all the best.